You, so you think all slutty behavior comes from trauma? No, that's not what I said. Oh, sorry. I said when people are traumatized, it interferes with their ability to form pair bonds. Mm -hmm. This is solid research if you look into anything that has to do with attachment theory. Mm -hmm. So, yes, you're right. When you say that slutty behavior gets in the way of forming good pair bonds, you're right. But the causal arrow also goes the other way. The inability to form good pair bonds due to trauma in childhood leads to slutty behavior because slutty behavior is one way to get attention. It's a, a, a unhealthy way to do it for many, many reasons. So it goes both ways. So my basic point is what you call slutty behavior and that you sort of attribute to being morally depraved, I see as arising out of trauma. And people who are traumatized ought not to be stigmatized. They ought to be treated with compassion. Doesn't excuse their behavior. Doesn't make their behavior attractive. It just explains it in a different way. So would you link it back to like fatherlessness, I'm guessing? Is that what you mean by trauma? That's that's part of the issue. Sometimes it's sexual abuse. Sometimes they just don't have a caregiver, either mother or father, mm -hmm. who's a safe place to go to for their emotions. The child is told, you don't really feel that or get away, ignore me. In my case, when I was angry, I was told, no, you're not angry. We don't get angry in this family. So it's not just limited to fathers being absent, although that certainly is a very damaging thing. I agree with you about that. That's just axiomatic. There's no arguing against that. But there are many ways in which trauma arise in family systems. Again, if you look into family systems therapy, if you look into attachment theory, there's many, many different ways. It could be chronic trauma. Chronic trauma is when it's low-grade trauma, but it's consistent. Acute trauma is something like you witness a car accident or you're sexually abused or you get shot or God forbid, like my father was a soldier, he had terrible PTSD. My take on it is men and women, all of us are traumatized in one form or another. This is a very traumatic world we live in. So a lot of the behavior that you attribute to being character flaws, as a healer, I see as trauma, not a moral failing or anything like that. Now, is it true that a lot of women and a lot of men have moral failings? Yes. But I don't think that's gender specific. I think it runs across all of humanity. It's mm -hmm. human. It's part of human nature. So when you say like, you said acute trauma, is that what you said? The, you said listed two types of trauma. Can you say that again? Yes, there's chronic trauma, mm -hmm. which is low grade trauma, like having a caretaker who ignores you or being present in a family where there's no physical affection, which I'm being transparent here, mm -hmm. that was my family. We were very, very well attended to and cared for, but there was no physical affection whatsoever. My Never got a hug from my mother, never got a hug from my father. I'm not looking for sympathy, mm -hmm. but it twisted and distorted my hunger for touch. You understand? Mm -hmm. So chronic trauma is low grade. Acute trauma is something that's very severe being molested, uh, watching someone be murdered, going through a violent act, being in a car accident, being shot. That's acute trauma. So I'm, Far more, I'm yeah. sorry, keep going. No, you go. So I'm, I'm curious, how would you explain? Because I guess sometimes I, I feel like people use trauma as an excuse. And I'll see two people from the same family come out completely different. Like, you know, I'm talking sisters two years apart. One will be the Virgin Mary, one will go crazy, you know, and, and I see this all the time. And I think because I, I have, you know, I have nine siblings, so I'm one at 10. I, I see the difference, like in, I guess, choices that you can make in a family, like every like kid in my family, I would say is pretty different. So I, I guess I'm just curious, like how you would differentiate the two. Excellent question. I'm not a scientist. So when I don't know the exact answer, my honest answer okay. is I don't know. My guess is some people are just hardwired to have a more reflective kind of consciousness. They can reflect on experience rather than be pulled into it. But here's another thing mm -hmm. that the research shows. The person who's able to handle the trauma better has what they call a compassionate witness. 
in my case, my eldest sister, well, I had another sister who passed on from cancer, but my current oldest sister, she was my compassionate witness. When I was the subject of abuse, she would see it. She would hold me. She would say that was wrong. So I had a compassionate witness. That's one explanation I would give. The rest of it, I really don't know. I haven't looked at the research. I don't even know if there is good research on it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. 